Do you have a problem with magpies and superstitions to the point that you salute magpies or say hello Mr Magpie? Or maybe if you see one magpie you frantically go looking for the second and if you can't find it then you start to panic that today is going to be a really bad day. So in this film we're going to share some tips with you to help suppress your superstition. The best way to deal with any superstition is to really understand where it originates from and then you can start to make sense of it. So with regards to the magpies, it seems to stem back from 1777, which is the first recording of a uh, children's nursery rhyme. And you may be familiar with that nursery rhyme, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy. Yeah. Um, five for silver. Six for gold, seven for secret, never to be told. And the thing with all superstitions, they are a cultural habit uh, as opposed to a conscious thought or belief. So they just get passed down. And this dates back to what? 17? 1777. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, this, there, was this, there was this rhyme that was first came about. And then this one for sorrow really stuck out in people's mind. Now, what people probably didn't realise is that uh, magpies, they are usually partnered for life. So they meet their partner. And, and they spend the rest of their life together, which is only a short three years approximately, um, sadly. However, if anything happens uh, to one of those magpies, then the one magpie that you're seeing, if they're a single magpie, they potentially have lost their partner. So it's them that has the sorrow. It's sorrow relates to them and the and fact that they're all on their own. That's right. So that's the first thing. So understand it. That and that's, you know, make sense of it. So you can realise when you see a magpie now, instead of feeling that the sorrow relates to you, it actually relates to that poor magpie. So you can feel really sorry for it. So it's all about changing perspective. And we actually worked with someone who had a real issue with this situation, with seeing a second magpie. I remember that he called us in and he said that, do you know what, I can, if I don't see that second magpie, I can have the worst day ever. Uh, and I said, well, we've got a real solution for you. I said, because we know someone who has got a pet shop, he can get all sorts of animals, and he can get two magpies and in a cage, and you can carry them around with you all the time. You're never going to have a bad day. Uh, and obviously he looked at me very puzzled, and he said, I'm not going to do that. I said, all right, okay. Is that a silly is looking for a second magpie? I said, but one thing you've never perhaps considered is that when you have seen the first magpie, and he said some days he will spend hours and he'd be late for work, he'd be late for all his appointments because he was trying to find the second magpie. And I said, and what happens when you see the second magpie? And he said, well, I have a great day then. I said, but have you ever considered that that second magpie was actually the first magpie you saw just flew around the block? <laughs> Uh, and that actually did the trick because he then realised, oh, actually, never considered that. Uh, the truth is, this does stem back to a story. It's not based That's on all fact. It is. It's not based on science. It's not based on anything other than a nursery rhyme. And uh, we hope that that information will really help you so that next time you see that single magpie, it will change how you feel. You can feel sorrow for the magpie, and you don't need to salute. <laughs>